Hi everyone, welcome and God bless you all. This is Larissa Gabu. Welcome to Gab Larissa Gabu show. Today we have a special day because we're going to have a women conference, a type of women conference. And this is about beauty, it's about prayer, it's about encouraging women around the world. I'm Larissa Gabu, originally from Cameroon, and I live to in Norway for many years. I'm a mother, I'm a, a woman of God, many other things. But tonight it's not about me, it's about um, women in general. And we have women from Kenya, USA, Sweden, Norway, and yes, and Philippines also. So tonight we're going to discuss a little bit about beauty. And um, I will start with uh, my dear sister, um, <laughs> and my dear sister and mentor, as I usually call her, because she she really is uh, a coach and mentor for me when it comes to the pageantry. And I'm so happy always when I'm going to host her. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Caroline. Thank you, Larissa. And uh, so good to uh, for you to give us this opportunity as women and for me to meet all these other women from around the world. Uh, I'm Dr. Caroline Vakai. I am originally from Kenya, but now I live in the United States uh, for the last 27 years. I am um, the CEO and founder of The Voice of Our Child, which is a program that offers mentorship to teens uh, in the hope of reducing the rate of depression, teens, teen, uh, depression and suicidal ideations in teens. I'm also um, a tour operator of NBC Tours and Travel, where we take uh, tourists to see my beautiful country, Kenya. I'm more of a serial entrepreneur because I do a lot of pageant coaching. I, I judge a lot of pageants. I'm also a personal stylist and I do a lot of counseling. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just kind of me in, uh, in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a mother of four. I'm a mother of four uh, okay. teenage kids now. Uh, my oldest is 27. My second one is 21, uh, 18 and uh, 16. And you have a very nice and handsome husband, David. Yes, yes. <laughs> Don't forget him. Oh, yeah, and my husband, David. Yeah, when I say I'm a mother of four, yeah, I mean, there's, there's people behind the kids. Yeah, exactly. so my husband, David. We have to honor the men as well. <laughs> I know, yes, yeah. So he's he's watching the football now. But, yes, my husband is David Bakaik, and he's the vice president of... Um, an import and export company, J.M. Rogers. Yeah, you're welcome, dear sister, and thank you for thank taking you. this time to support me and many other women. You're very welcome. And I'm going to give the word to uh, Enjoy. I know you are listening. <laughs> you're very yes. welcome. Yes, hi, hello, everybody. <laughs> Can you, uh, uh, oh yeah, am I clear or? Yeah, yeah you are clear. I'm oh, yeah, hearing you well. So it's my turn to say something. Okay. Yes, uh, I'm a Filipina, but I'm living now in Norway. A mother of two boys. Uh, I've been here. I've been living here in I think it's 17 years now. So I'm a, a bit Norwegian in a way, but my heart is still a Filipino. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I'm. I I love God <laughs> with all of my heart and. Uh, I, I, I experienced a lot of things that uh, God showed me that build up my spiritual life. And, but I, I didn't uh, expect that when I came here to Norway, uh, I experienced um, mental issues and like that. And it's kind of like, I went to depression and anxiety, but that's really like a blessing in disguise because after that, I realized that I'd missed a lot of what God has given me because what I see is like, I always have this, I'm not good enough. You know, when, when I know that, you know, God is giving me already everything. But after that uh, process of healing, after, after the depression, then I realized that the true beauty, it's really when you see your truth, how God sees you and what God sees in, see about you. And when you start there and when you start living in there, it, it opens everything. Like 
I, I, I would say like life is really begin when you start seeing what's the inside of you. So when when Larissa, Sister Larissa shared it to me about the beauty inside and out, I said, wow, I, I really uh, need this uh, and I want to support you because this is how it is. Like you can start seeing the beauty, you know, from the ashes that is showing around. So um, what I'm doing right now is because of the depression and health uh so I'm advocating people that they don't need to, especially women, that they don't need to afraid about being not okay and they don't need to afraid if there is something that they need to ask for from a doctor because of depression. Like, like, it, yeah, showing, accepting and who, what is going on with you and going through with different feelings, I believe that would start the healing. Because uh, it's just like the Lord showed me that when you worship me in joy, it is like accepting who you are and everything that is like with a feeling and, and positive. And then when I start that, so that's, I see life in me right now. And I, yeah. thank, I thank God for you, Larissa, for bridging this, this gap. Yeah. You're welcome. And, um, you know, we're going to hear more about um, your book also because uh, you wrote a book for the teen. Yeah. Um, yes, of recent. And uh, it's uh, after what you've experienced. And uh, this book is really going and very interesting. Yeah. So we're going to hear more. And thank you, dear, for coming. I'm so happy. It's yeah. very encouraging. Now I'm going to hear from Lena. Lena, yes. from Sweden. Oh, hello. Yes, I live in Sweden and uh, everybody tells about her mo mo their motherhood. So I have to tell about mine. I have three kids here and uh, I have uh, some in heaven too. Uh, sorry, but uh, we all maybe have some in heaven, but we have to live anyway. So I have a son that died. Uh, sorry, but I have three alive children. And I'm very happy for them. Uh, two boys and a girl and some grandchildren also so I'm very happy uh, yes I live in Sweden uh, you can say in the middle of Sweden you can say it's uh, difficult to uh, tell exactly over right over the biggest lake on the left <laughs> in the middle so we have near nearby to the lake and I love it here but uh, it's a little bit too cold now for me. I like the I like the the warm climate, and uh, I have met uh, Larissa in Norway because my husband is Norwegian, and he is also uh, uh, watching football right now. <laughs> so it's a common interest among men, I think. And then you. You you are a singer, a very big yes. singer and you. producer, yes. and you have had uh, your own television for many many years. Yes, and, my last, uh, last season I had together with my former husband who is in heaven now, and we travel like country team with a cowboy hat. That's why it was the cowboy hat on that picture you took, <laughs> and we travel all along Norway and Sweden, uh, have meeting in several. Uh, places and we saw a lot of people get saved and it was a fantastic time we made a lot of cds about 10 12 cds i think if we count the, the christmas cds and i have also made some cds in my new season but not together with my new husband because he don't sing i, <laughs> said, I need a husband in my life i said to god but <clears throat> you don't need him to be a singer it's okay if it's not it is a big, big problem for you god to find somebody anyway okay i can i can sing myself so that's what i do i sing myself and i had my studio here in sweden and i made my music on my uh, my keyboard so uh, and and uh, made it myself for the moment because i can <laughs> so yeah. Well, yeah, to be a little bit yeah. 
Yeah, I'm so happy that you could come in. Yes, yeah, thank you for having me here. Thank you, Larissa. You're welcome. And now I want to give the word to Anik. Anik, to yeah. be good. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Anik. Uh, I'm from Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, but I live in Cameroon for 30 years now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't care where I live. The most important is that uh, my father, the Lord, owned the earth. So wherever I stay, I'm very comfortable because I know that I'm going to, to also enjoy what this country has to offer. So I have uh, three kids. Uh, two doctors and uh, one boy. Uh, all my children are very big now. And I, I'm also a grandmother of uh, one girl of 13 years old. Yeah. So um, uh, daily, um, I'm a writer, also a pastor. And then uh, I manage a business with my husband here. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I used to do. I'm very focused on uh, uh, leadership, women leadership, and also entrepreneurship. So in my free time, I work a lot with uh, uh, entrepreneurs like Happy Youth to own their own business, to find a way to discover themselves. And it's the same work, the work we are doing uh, concerning women because I'm, I'm sure that women have a lot of capacity and they are the one who have to build the home, the house. So if a, a, a woman is well equipped, then we are sure that a family is going to be a blessing family. So this is uh, why I'm very uh, interesting in uh, uh, Larissa program, uh, Beautiful Insight, because uh, as uh, a woman, we need to be beautiful inside because we have a lot to give. We have a lot to to give to our husband, our children, our family. So if you are, you don't have something inside, if you don't have gold inside, if you don't have something to share, uh, you are not going to be helpful to the society. So actually the society need people who have something. Um, and I'm sure that we all are on this earth with a purpose, with a mission. So what we need to do is to, to work with people and make them become better every day. Amen. I can just say amen to that. And you are Dr. Yannick, Dr. Pastor. You have so many titles. <laughs> and you are my sister and friend. Love you. Thank you for coming. Um, I think we have uh, Claudia. Is Claudia now? Yes. Hello. Yes. I will present Claudia a little bit. Uh, Claudia is the next leader of uh, Beautiful Inter Out. And uh, I have so much respect and love for her because she believes in me. You know, if we don't have people who believe in what the Lord put in us, we'll be discouraged. And last year I was uh, looking for someone, prayed, Lord, send someone to register alongside with me. And Claudia has been there since then. So together we work on beautiful inside out. You're welcome, dear sister. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, I am so, uh, I just feel so appreciate <laughs> to be uh, in this um, concept, beautiful in inside out. Yeah. Um, I, I am a, I'm married, I have uh, two daughters and uh, two grandchildren and uh, working as a nurse assistant. And uh, I'm also studying, and uh, yes, I love Jesus. <laughs> I've always done that mm -hmm. my whole life. Yeah, so uh, I'm so happy to meet all these women, these beautiful, wonderful women. We have uh, something to give each other mm -hmm. from the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Are you here? 
Venke? Okay, I was talking. She wasn't hearing because I mute myself. It's Venke. Yes, I'm here. Oh, welcome, dear sister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so nice and good to sit here and listen to everyone. I'm also married. I'm a mother, grandmother, mother-in-law. So many kids, many grandchildren. And um, I'm also traveling a little around with my husband. He is the singer, evangelist in the singer. And he is also a Bible teacher. His name is Remy Hallam. I am an evangelist, but I'm also listening to people. Much people is calling me. So I'm just listening, praying with them. I have also had meeting all over the world from different countries. So I was telling in Norwegian in the last meeting, here in Norway, we don't use anything on our head. But when I am speaking or praying down to Pakistan, India, or to the Muslim land, I always using the scarf on my head just to show the woman the respect. Because if we are looking back some years here in Norway, the woman also was using something on their head. I can remember my own grandmother, she was using a hat when she was going to the church. And she was almost crying to me because her youngest daughter was coming and getting every of the hat she was taking with her in the kindergarten. And she was crying to me, my daughter had taken my church hat. That was awful for her. So here in Norway, we also using something on the hat. If we was going to church, the meeting, or even to praying, but not anymore. If we want to, we can do it, but it's not like we have to do, like I was told in 1988. There was a man who was telling me, if you want to pray, you have to use something on your head. And for me, that was not the right. For me, was it bad? So I was begin to ask other people in the meeting, why? Do I have to use something on my head when I'm praying in, in my home? And then there was someday a man, a pastor coming to me. He had speaking with a Bible teacher. And he was also telling them, if I was feeling bad with using something on my head, then it was wrong. So if you feel okay to pray without, just do it without. So... I don't use anything on my head, only if I'm preaching the word of the Lord to other country and especially down to the Muslims country. Yeah. Thank you for coming. And uh, I'm so excited about hearing what you love with your heart, because today we're going to talk about beauty and prayer and uh, connected to the life of Esther. Yes. I do believe that um, what happened during the time of Esther is happening now when we look at the prophetic eyes. I'm an apostle, most prophetess, singer, and I'm a mom of two boys living in Norway. And I do believe for a time as such as this, we are not here by accident. And God used all the gifts he has given us for us to change our life, family, and worlds. So I've stood and believe that God has anointed me and sent me to Norway and given me this vision. And if it wasn't you, you believing in me, I wouldn't be here seeing it happening. What I want through this is to encourage women to stand, step out with what they have. I remember the story of, of Moise. God asked him, what do you have in your hand? Go and deliver Israel. I believe the Lord put every, in every one of us tonight something that one person needs, that I may need, you may need. 
So we're going to talk about beauty because we are having a conference in December, Beautiful Inside Out, and I've experienced a lot of critics. People don't understand why is it that we Christian women, we have to talk about beauty. Why is it that I joined the pageantry? The time of Esther, the king organized a pageantry uh, competition when he said he was looking for a wife. He gave an announcement and he said, bring me all the beautiful girls. And Esther, who was the daughter of the God Almighty, she went to this beauty competition. If it was now, if it was the king of Norway organizing a beauty pageant competition, uh, how many women Christian will go to that beauty contest? How many women think because they are Christian, they cannot go to this place or that place? I do believe that Jesus left heaven to earth. He left the kingdom of light to the kingdom of darkness to save us because he loves us. And he said, go to the world, go out. So I believe what he gave us, what we receive as love, is to do the same as he do, did, is to go outside. Like you went to the Muslim, I'm going to different media, and we can change the people with the light and the love we have in us. So it is what it is about. I want to encourage the women. I want to hear what other sister has so we can do something with our world of today to see something better happening. Because Esther, what she did when she became the, the queen, she stood for her country, she stood for her people. She did not change her identity, even though she lived in the palace. I believe they, they were not worshiping the same God as her. But she never changed her personality or anything. She knew who she was. And but God, uh, uh, God knew why he made that being there. He knew already that she was there for a purpose. And I do believe every one of us, we are not here by accident. We are here for a purpose. This is my, my introduction to the, the topic. And I will give the word to Dr. Caroline again to speak about beauty and uh, why is it that uh, is it important for women to, to join the pageantry and to, to serve God with what they have in the pageantry. And anyway, sister, you can just say the way the Lord put in your heart what you have to give to women through this. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Yes. And I love how you just like do your research. And every time you're talking, like you'll quote, you know, things from the Bible and, and what it talk about beauty. See, when I, when we, as women, we, we all growing up, it's like we think that beauty is what we see in magazines or what we see on TV or what is perceived to be beautiful. And as a woman growing up in Africa where I was dark skinned, it was always like the lighter people, you know, are beautiful. And I remember not really liking myself when I was little and um, I was really a dark, really chubby girl. And then as I became a teenager, um, I, I really thought about it more because I, I figured, oh, maybe my light skin friends, you know, like get boyfriends faster than I get a boyfriend, you know, or things like that. Until when I started really maturing and realizing that beauty really definitely comes from the inside. And I have to say that I was gifted because I was doing well in school. I was getting awards for my that great teacher writing, oh, I have really good leadership qualities before I even knew what it meant to be a leader. And and, you know, getting awards like for school president and for um, just for my behavior. And those things gave me confidence. And I realized that confidence was beautiful. And um, when I came to the United States, I competed for Mrs. Kenya. But I competed for Mrs. Kenya because I had watched a pageant uh, online. And I saw all these women talking about different platforms, you know, whether it was domestic violence, whether it was autism, whether it was cancer. And I thought about all the girls that I had left in the village and how education with the Maasai tribe that I grew with was not important to the girls and how girls went through circumcision and how my country suffered with lack of clean water. So I wanted to become one of those women who were there, but deep inside still, I had those insecurities of like, oh, maybe I'm not beautiful enough. I, I just can't really be able to do this. 
But I realized beauty has to come from the inside. And beauty is like what you think of yourself. And my confidence is what is attractive. So I competed as Mrs. Kenya with a platform. And out of that, I represented Kenya in uh, India and then twice in Russia, where I, I would say I did well. You know, being a third runner up or fourth runner up in a Mrs. World competition is a big thing. But my whole focus of doing it was because I wanted to talk about um the you know the issues that we had back home and from that is when i formed my tour company the nbc tours and travel where now i take tourists back to kenya and most of the proceeds go to help you know the maasai tribe and i've teamed up with uh paul and avery mantel here who live where i live in kinelon and they also help the maasai tribe and then uh in 2019 um my oldest daughter i found out had really struggled with depression and suicidal ideation and as a mother, I was really trying so hard, like to talk to people and to talk to the community. And then I remembered, you know what? When I was Mrs. Kenya, I was invited to speak at a lot of places. So I competed as Mrs. Pennsylvania because I was living in, Miss, in Pennsylvania then. And I won the title of Mrs. Pennsylvania. And it took me three times to win it. So that, that time was the time that I won. And again, I still had that insecurity in me. It was like, I know everyone was like, why would you want to compete when you're older? You're like in your forties. Why are you even thinking of competing? And people had a misconception of what the pageant really was. But I knew that the pageant is composed of women. It's the same way people run for any government office. They want to be a voice for something. And I wanted to be a voice for mental health. And so the year that I won, I went around like, to so many different countries talking about mental health, removing the stigma of mental illness, found out later that my husband too had struggled with depression and I started the organization, The Voice of Our Child. And out of that, out of working in the pageant and out of working, after I competed for Mrs. Kenya, I worked as a contestant coordinator. I worked as one of the chief negotiators where I traveled the world, you know, like soliciting for sites, you know, for the pageant. And I realized that all these women who come to a pageant are women who have a story to tell. I, and, and they're women who are extraordinary because they wanted to use that which was so much in their heart to get on that stage. But a lot of people didn't understand why they competed, where a woman would come and compete in a pageant, but she doesn't even tell her family that she's competing. She doesn't even tell her friends that she's competing. And I've had women actually win and start calling their families and saying, oh, I want it. They're like, one, one, where are you? And it was a shame in it because people have this concept that all oh, women who compete in a pageant, you think you're beautiful, you think you're a beauty queen, you're showing your nakedness, you're not showing your nakedness. When even they do the, the swimsuit segment, it's just that confidence that you have. We all go to the beach, we wear a swimsuit anyway. But I started a podcast that was called uh, Beauty Pageant Take Two because I realized all these women who come and compete in their pageant, when the winner is called, nobody gets to hear the story of these other women because you don't get to see the interview with the judges, which carries 50 points. And that's where the ladies tell the judges why they are competing. And their stories are captivating. Like I said, they're women who will have gone through something really, there was such a struggle in their life or their children are struggling that they will choose to be a spokesperson for, for that. And through my podcast, I was able to interview so many different women who told me stories that would give me chills, who told me stories. It was like, I'm so glad you're telling your story because we all know as women, if we don't tell our story, other people will tell it. And it becomes such a distorted version of who we are. And you'll always have people who will not just be saying good things. It's sometimes always a negative, especially if you're so confident and you walk into a room and you're smiling and you love people. My gift is hospitality. I love people. I'm a confident woman. I'm always out there, you know, doing things. So I might walk into a room and some women might feel intimidated by me. But they'll not look at it as confidence. They'll think you're boastful. They think you think you're so beautiful. You're all that. But they don't know who we are. And I love this saying that a dog barks when he doesn't know the person. But police dogs don't bark because they're fierce. So, so uh, I, I I don't even know like where, where where it ended. But but what I was just saying is that I I have a lot of respect for every woman, and I believe that women can run a country, and especially women who put themselves out there to compete in pageants. And I think that people just need to understand what pageants really are. And they are not uh, strip clubs. They are not uh, for women who are very, um, uh, what can I say? Like maybe uh, who think that they're, I don't know what the, the right word 
to use, but I know that people have always thought that maybe they're just stupid women and they're beautiful and everything. But even when I'm just listening to every story about what people are talking about, you all have a voice for something, whether it's saying about praying, you know, with covering your head, you know, there probably could be a woman competing in a pageant, telling the world about it because the pageant gives you a platform where you're now talking to the whole world and just not talking to your village. And it becomes like your badge of honor that you wore. And I do remember that the most critic I got mostly was from the church. Because um, when I joined the, the, the one of the churches that I joined, uh, I was even afraid even ever to tell anybody that was Mrs. Kenya. I never even tell Mrs. Pennsylvania, you know, like people just say behind me. And then it's almost, I sh it's almost like I panic because I'm just thinking to myself, like, my goodness, I've been coming to this church. I, I started a soup kitchen. I'm helping me there, I mean, the women Bible study group and everything, and somebody here will not understand who I really am. And it, it, it becomes such a shame that you could be this person, just but just because somebody says, oh, you know, she's Mrs. Kenya, now they start looking at you differently, like you're full, full of yourself, you're a beauty queen and everything. And I remember people would make some kind of remarks, like if we were going on a mission trip, they'd be like, oh, are you gonna come in your high heels? Of course I have common sense, I'm not gonna come in my high heels, but. But that just tells me you're very insecure now with me. Like all of a sudden now I'm a very different person. But then again, I think God just teaches me that our ignorance will make us say things that are very hurtful to people just because we don't know. Just like maybe the lady who was talking about maybe praying and covering her head. If she, uh, if another woman told somebody that, they would think, oh, she's so primitive and stupid. She thinks women still have to cover their head. But no, it, it just needs a education people just need an education and everything and you could be the most learned person but there are things that you don't understand and i think that that's the same thing with project people really don't understand it so when i met someone like larissa and and i saw the work that she was doing with you know women of god and, and preaching and all that i said larissa like i think that you should compete in a project and she was like why like what, what why do a body is it acceptable i said anything is acceptable you know it's it's acceptable to even wear like expensive perfume. There's this woman who washed Jesus' feet with the perfume. Jesus didn't say, "Oh, I can't talk to her. She's a prostitute, and she she has this expensive perfume." You know, there's always something. It's beautiful about a woman, and I said you can use that, and you can show the women that they could be Christians and still go out there and talk about wonderful things and be a spokesperson for something. And that's how I feel that I did. And I showed people how when I competed for Mrs. Kenya, I started that business of, of travel. When I competed as Mrs. Pennsylvania, I started the business of um, the voice of, or rather the organization of the voice of our child, where my main goal is to talk to other parents who missed on all the signs that I missed with my daughter, because I thought she was lazy. I just thought she had an attitude. And my poor child the whole time was struggling. And there's so many mothers there their children are suffering with depression. They don't know about it. You talk to another mother, they're like, oh, my teen is like that too. They don't want to work. They want to sleep the whole day. Your child could be struggling. And that became my goal. But as I've matured as a person, I'm now 52 years old. And as I have matured in Christ, I have realized it doesn't matter. You don't need negative people in your life. You don't need to please everybody in your life. You don't need to explain yourself to other people. Because when God, God is blessing you, people are going to look at you and they will not even understand. Just like when Jesus was here, people didn't even understand what he was doing. So before I, I, I held back myself because I wanted to please people. I wanted them to think that I was ordinary. I am not ordinary. God has blessed me. And Amen. every milestone that he has given me is mine. You know, I earned it. God made it possible for me to be Mrs. Kenya, to be Mrs. Pennsylvania, to be a spokesperson, to travel the world, to own these businesses. And I wear that with pride. And, and I tell God when people are removed from my life or they don't understand me, it's because when God blesses you so much, people will not understand you. No. They will look at you and, and tell stories behind you because they cannot understand. Because when God puts his hand on you and says, you're my child and I have picked you to do this, People yeah. will talk about you and go like, I don't even know. She's crazy. I think she's like this and like that because they don't understand. But it is our, our obligation to tell them the story and who's behind all the success that we have. Amen. And I'm standing here today just like all of you because God has, us, has chosen us and, 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 and brought Larissa into our lives to give us this platform to talk. And when you talk, people will listen. It's not because you're more privileged than anybody else. It's because... <laughs> But God chooses you. He chooses somebody who cannot talk. I love this story about uh, um, 
give me faith like David, like Moses. God trusts people who nobody ever thought about. So when God picked us, people look at you and go like, why you? Because God picked me. So I'm just so Amen. happy that you're all here. And I think that you're all very special. And you have a story to tell. Amen. Yes. You know, I could listen to you the whole day. It's so rich. And uh, thank you so much for accepting that calling. Because it's not everybody who knows what God wants them to do and take the sacrifice. Even to walk on a hill, it's a sacrifice. You don't just walk in the more, take a high hill and walk. It's painful sometimes. And I remember lately I was crying and I was falling with the high, very high hill. And I was like, I'm doing this so that I will leave a legacy. So that I will encourage more than who have been single, more than who have been in other countries all alone and thinking, okay, it's because I don't have this and that. When God gives us something and only Jesus we need. When you have God and your faith, you have everything. Thank you so much. And even accepting that is it's an action of love. Because even Jesus could say, no, I don't want to go to hell. When you accept this, you are who you are today because you accept it and because you love people and you can share with us because you love us. And I thank you so much, dear sister, for sharing. And um, I want to mention about the trip in Kenya because when I'm going to edit this video, I'm going to also post about the trip in Kenya and my conference here where, as you said, would you like to say something a little bit about that trip because... I would really love to go there and probably encourage many to join. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Larissa. So we do safaris to Kenya, but every year we have like one that we call a mission trip or a humanitarian trip. And this is where we gather like-minded people. We also bring some teams that are sponsored by organizations or even individuals to Kenya because they realize like when teams are taken out of their current environment and put in another environment by helping others, they help themselves. And so we um, we organize this trip. Of course, we go see the beauty of the country. Kenya is one of the most beautiful countries to visit. If you want to see the wildlife in there, it's natural habitat. It's like it, every time, even though I grew up there, that I go with a group of people, it's almost like I'm seeing these animals for the first time. We also visit the villages where we uh, give like the school supplies, you know, to the girls who we have helped with the education. And again, with the Maasai Girls Fund, uh, and you can look them up that I have teamed up with. We get to, uh, to, to visit these girls even in the schools that they go to. And there's an installment. You can pay an installment little by little until the time is, is ready for uh, us to go. We are leaving on June the 23rd. And we normally go for 10 days or 14 days. There are people who leave just after 10 days. There are those who extend their time there. It's such a wonderful time, not just to uh, visit these kids, but just to see the wildlife, you know, see something different. And Larissa, when you said about a calling, I don't think that when God called you, you could say no. You saw what happened to Jonah and who was <laughs> swallowed by a whale. In the fish. It's not easy what I have done. Like there are times I would get so tired and, and, and the critics from the people. And I was like, God, I just can't do this anymore. I can't be able to just, you know, go and keep helping these kids that I'm helping. I don't get sponsorship from people and I'm doing it. And even from family, they'd be like, you have to stop this. It's not of any profit. But God reminds me every day, it is because I have called you. You're just an instrument. All this power and everything you're doing is not your own doing, Caroline. So don't ever take that praise and say, oh, look at what I'm doing. And he reminds me every day that as long as you're going to wake up, I'm going to send you. And Amen. I find that as much as I say, I'm not going to do it, I wake up and I do it. And I was just thinking about this sister who was talking about how she preaches and she does all these things. I'm sure people in such kind of positions are where sometimes you're like, I cannot do this, God. You come and preach to these people because I can't do it. But the following day, you find you're waking up to do it because when God calls us, he just uses us as an instrument. It's not our power. It is yeah. his power. So everything that you're doing, never ever think that, oh, it is me who's doing it or I can say tomorrow I will not do it. Yeah. You will know it's a calling because the more frustrated you are, the more you still keep doing the same, same thing. So. I think it's a calling and God calls people who nobody else would ever think that would be called. And I feel awesome. called for what I do and I love what I do. And if people don't understand or talk about it or however they see me to me, it's, I feel like when people don't talk about you, then you're not doing anything. You should be really happy when people talk about you. There's only 10 
look for another five so that you have 15 talking about it because then you really know <laughs> you're doing what you're called to do <laughs> exactly i'm so happy that uh, you could come i know that you are soon leading to for job you are going yes. to work and that's yes. the reason why i gave you the time and uh, i yeah i'm so thankful dear and, Thank uh, you. and I'm i'll still be listening to you i'll just turn off my mic and get it on my phone i mean my video and get it on my phone but i'm just so happy to meet all these women wonderful wonderful women and i hope that we network together because strong women we can change the world and i know that we can do so many wonderful things together amen amen and i'm looking forward by god grace to for the queen of the world so <laughs> oh, you will do, you will do great it, 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 you you're called to do it larissa you are just called to lead women and bring them together and that's your gift <laughs> thank you again my greetings to your family and everyone we talk and thank you thank, thank you so much thank yeah. you bye everybody <laughs> You're welcome. So I'm going to give the word to, um, I think, to, to enjoy. Are you there? Yes. Oh, so inspiring to hear Dr. Caroline. You know, uh, there's a lot of meat to eat there. Um, uh, what I'm going to, I so agree with that we have all stories to tell. You know, when I start, when the doctor told me that you have, uh, you are in state of depression, I remember it so well. And I said, oh, no. I was like, my name is Enjoy, and I'm preaching the word of God in the Philippines. I'm praying, and, you know, uh, God used, used to heal people, and I'm leading people to 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 receive Jesus Christ and here the doctor told me I I I have a depression no way so no way and it's a shame but uh yeah it took me like 5 years before I accepted it because of the shame that I am a Christian I have this because what would people think about me you know where's my faith <laughs> so I I I said yes I need help I needed help, I told to my doctor, because I see my life, it's, I feel like I don't have life anymore. Yes, I have faith, but even just to pray, I don't have the energy. And when I started accepting my situation, not, not this accepting that this is what I, what I am, but accepting that I needed a help, then the healing started to come. It took years. I, I, I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't have a ministry right now because in the Philippines been left and right ministries. And then I, I do something that I feel like it's not pleasing to God. But then the Lord told me, enjoy, I love you. And I said, because God, in spite of what I, am, I was doing, the, I, the goodness of the Lord, I see good and good. I said, Lord, you know, I don't know about you women if you know that you are not doing the right thing and then the lord or someone shows you good things it's irritable right so i asked the lord lord why why you keep doing this and the lord said i love you i said okay so what do you want me to do and he said again i love you period and that was the time it's blown up it's like a revolutionary for me to see another perspective of God's love for me and for the people. And that depression and anxiety, when I said earlier that it's it's kind of a um, blessing in disguise because it took me my old life to have the life, I would say the new life and the life that actually has God for me. But I, I was so afraid, you know, like Dr. Caroline, that those women who competing the pageant pageantry they have all the stories and they want that platform to use to voice out their what you know the stories behind so i today this is now my my message to the people as i said get out from actually last night i was invited to to share an inspirational talk for over 100 people and this i will i will share it with you the four things i shared with them is like this is how I also use for myself. This is my four ingredients in life. First is you have to get out, step out from the box that you are hiding. 
because if you you don't want and you don't want you are not willing to to get out you will miss what life could you know show to you because it's it's greater things and you know that you know as a children of god god deposited us potential capacity to do something great greater than what you are doing right now and then i told them number number two i know that it sounds scary but it's time to face the fear that's why beauty inside and out it's like get out and face the fear because you know before i thought that fear is our enemy but now fear is our for me it's my best friend because it pushes me to my limit and discover me what god actually has put inside of me so and then the third one because while we are walking in the unknown thing like faith you know like we don't know but we have faith it's a scary and then there's always oppositions challenges and critics and everything and then choose your battle you don't have to fight those things you don't have to fight every single fight you see because you know in order for for us to walk with ease and grace and harmony and the peace that is inside of us we have to choose our battle and then number 4 i told them number 4 if you don't have this it's hard for us to have this number 1 number 2 number 3 it's love yourself and there you go they said oh so love yourself it's not a self a selfish act actually it is a self care because what i believe when you start loving yourself and when you start accepting your imperfection like when you feel the negative side you embrace it because the spark of how god created us you also worship the creator you know you worship you also worship the creator when you really love because when i think before i worship god with all of my heart i love god i love jesus christ so much but when i see myself i'm beating up and telling myself you're not good enough i'm hiding with something and when god showed it to me it was like for me it's a hypocrisy that i didn't know that that it was i was doing that because i would say i love you lord i worship you but i cannot love myself and me is god's creation so then when god showed me that i started to love myself and and and, and also when you start loving yourself that's the only thing you can genuinely give out love and cares to others and also the the important thing because what why what what i was did before is i giving out everything like my 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 tongue or my heart my cup inside was empty because i'm giving out because love you you know love others serve others and like that and then i get burned out and i'm trying so hard but then the lord told me that enjoy with you when you start cup loving yourself and pouring in the love for yourself from the love of god and knowing who you are and standing with your truth your cup will start to pouring in you know and then until it overflows and then that overflowing that's the only thing you can give out to your to your children wow. to your loved ones to your friends wow. and do not touch inside that's intact keep wow. it overflowing so it will become just when you love others it is just like a natural overflowing it is no hard it is so easy so i think that's all i wanted to share wow. that's stuff <laughs> that's stuff you know i'm so blessed myself when i came to this meeting i came prepared to receive and what you just said is blowing mind it it's a revelation and it's like loving yourself first and then the overflowing will automatically tickly be easy to love others yeah. by his grace thank you so much that was really powerful everything you share thank you and thank you for having sense. me here yeah i'm looking forward for the conference because you are coming yes and, and with my book i'm also bringing my book to sell it is very yes. very a uh, good tool for for the mother for the teens for 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 everyone and it's a good when i'm meeting. going to, so i'm going to put the picture of your book again when i will edit this video yeah so Thank i will uh, i'm going to put it yeah you're coming with the books and uh, i'm going to get some for my kids 
I think this is something we have to talk to most teens and may adult also, as we, we, we mentioned before. Yeah. But thank you so much thank for you. sharing. And uh, yes, now we're going to listen to Dr. Anik. Anik, are you, are you there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all those sharing. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, uh, Larissa, when you, you, you present the topic, uh, there are some stuff that I just noticed, you know, I remember when I was a student, I joined a student association at, at the university and as Christian, it was very difficult to find uh, a lot of Christian, uh, who joined this kind of uh, organization because for them, uh, it's not appropriate as a Christian to, to join this kind of uh, youth organization because they are not, uh, all of them are not uh, Christian. But for me, it was a, a very important um, experience because I have to meet people around the world. Uh, this is the organization will make me discover different uh, countries, uh, different uh, people because uh, the organization was international and uh, it was based in more than 126 countries. So we had the opportunity to travel a lot and meet different type of people living, you know, and uh, I discovered that so many uh, Christian, they want to learn something. They want to participate. They want to, to gain uh, meeting. They also want to be in touch with people, but they are afraid of what people are going to tell, uh, say, and all those things. Uh, we live because uh, we don't want people to tell uh, about uh, us and say, oh, look at this person. Look at where she's going. Look at what she wants to do. Look at the people she work with. So all those things is very difficult. As uh, Dr. Uh, the Dr. Caroline said to, uh, a few minutes ago, it's very difficult for people to live without uh, uh, thinking about other people, what they are going to say. We don't care about what they are going to say. We focus on what God wants us to do because we all are in this earth uh, with a purpose and uh, uh, what is in, inside everyone God knows it. God knows that we have the potential. God knows that we have a talent. God knows that we have a gift. And all those things is uh, we need to, to develop them. And we need to be in contact of what's going on around us. We cannot leave people take everything. We don't want to do this because it's, it's pagan. We don't want to go here because they are going to criticize us. We don't want to, to join ourselves. Finally, we don't have anything. We don't have anything because today, when you are looking for a job, how many Christians have companies? So you say that we, we are not allowed to join all those uh, beautiful uh, uh, competition. Uh, we don't have to join this and that, but we work for pagan. Because these are the pagan who have the companies, most of them. How many Christians uh, Christian have all those things that we need? How many, so, how many Christians own banks? Banks. I'm telling you. I'm but telling you. They are you. using the so, money. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is crazy. We need honestly. We need to be everywhere. We need to to be everywhere and know our identity. Uh, the Lord said that we are in this world, but we are not from this world. That, that's that's true. Uh, I was in this organization uh, more than uh, 15 years, but I did not I did not uh, do the same thing that people are doing because I have my principle. I know who I am. I know what I'm not uh, allowed to do. So uh, what is very important is to to to, to get um, a new knowledge, to to get new way of doing things. And today, all the things that I learn is going to help people. What I learned from this uh, pagan environment is going to help uh, uh, our sisters in the church, our brother and sister, parent, everyone in the church, because when God wants to use you, he wants to use you uh, based on the experience that you have in your life. And where can we get this experience when Christians don't do anything concrete? We cannot just leave, go to church and come back home and then we don't have relation, we don't have connection, we don't have a, 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 like a, a competency, we don't have anything. We want to learn how the work is working. We need to join our 
yourself in all those things around. We need them to take the lead because if we, we, we lead all those organizations, then we know what to tell people. We know yes, how to take decision. We know how to change the thing because we are a change agent. God said that we are a light and a light, you need to be where we don't have, we can see light. If you are a light and you cannot be where people are so that you can, you can bring these lights and, and make people understand that we can do this by in the way of God. Because when yes, you look at everything around ourselves, I am not sure that the world creates something because God created everything. Amen. When we talk about, you talk about Esther, but what Esther did, this is what we do today. And then we, we attributed this uh, 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 beautiful competition to the world, to the pagan, but we saw it in the Bible. And this is really important. As a child of God, we need to take care of ourselves. You know, um, I remember that when uh, you, you talk about God, you want to evangelize someone. She said, I don't want to go in, in your church because the way you dress, the way you do your hair, the way you look, the appearance is very terrible, you know, because for them, a Christian, she, she have to wear like uh, a dress who is not aligned, who is not stylish. You, you do you need to do hair the way uh, like old woman and all those things this is the picture that the world have concerning christian concerning christianity but when i go through my bible they say that god is very uh, is a majesty majestic person is beautiful god uh, money everything comes from him so why should we look different when we serve a God who, who is very uh, 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 marvelous. So amen, we need to amen, rethink amen. again. We need to rethink again. We need to make sure that, okay, so if we want to impact the world, people have to see in us uh, the beauty, the beauty of our kingdom. Our mm -hmm. kingdom is made of someone who is beautiful is full of love is yes. uh, characterized by beautiful things so this is what we can give to people uh, we, mm -hmm. we want to if, uh, we want to bring more people in the in the house of god but uh, they want to see us exactly first of all what are you doing how do you look the way you look the way you <laughs> you appear this is very important uh, anytime that I go for a conference and I mention that I'm a Christian, people say, oh, okay, so you're a Christian and then you, you join this organization, you do this, you do that, you do this. I say, yes, you as a Christian, you can do that, but you always remind in your head that you have principle and you know who you are. And if Amen. you join something, if you go anywhere, what you need to do is to take the lead. You take the lead and you give, you give the direction. Jesus. I, I joined different associations and I was the, the national president and I say, ha, uh, you want to, to take some decision? I say, yeah, that's that's the price. If you, if I, I run to be a president, it's because I want to, to see the change so I cannot yeah, be a exactly. president and I don't have power. So if I want to run for a position, I want to take the lead. So that I will change the thing and I know how things can go. You know, Amen. and I remember I, I have this opportunity to, to impact a lot, a lot of life because anytime that I join a project or an activity, I used to tell them that my God is a king, he never fails. So any project that I, I join, I'm going to succeed. You know, Amen. so all, all my team members, they just keep it in their heads. Anytime they want to do something, they say, our president say that uh, our father is a king and you never <laughs> fail. So this is good, you know? So this is what we need to do. We can do the beautiful, uh, the beauty inside competition in our way, the way the Lord wants us to do it. Because I'm sure that God continue to speak. And if you want to do something, it's going to be uh, 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 done the way God wants it to be done. Uh, maybe today, the project that we want to run, people don't understand it, but I'm sure that God 
is going to make it something grateful. We need to change the way we are, we are operating. We need to change the way we are going uh, close to people. We need to join them because I never saw Jesus during uh, his whole life uh, working only with the, the, the pastors and evangelists. <laughs> he was working with those who are uh, who are suffering, uh, women who need help, uh, 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 widows. This is where he was yes. to help them, to show yes. them love, to tell them mm -hmm. that there is something in you that can mm -hmm. make you be different. So we, there is no space which uh, dedicated to to Christian and another space which dedicated to uh, pagan. We are the child of God and we have the power to take everything because the Bible tell me that I will always be on the top. And so the everything existing in this world, we need to take the lead and show people how we need to run it because they are not, it's not those people who are going to dictate us what we need to do. We no. are the people who are going to show them how Amen. things have to be done. I love that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to we are going to we are going to have come to it. Hallelujah. I love that. That was so powerful. <clears throat> Anik, I know you from before. I when you preach, I stand up always. I say I shout, yes, hallelujah, in my house. And I'm like, wow, when you are coming to Norway, I'm going to give you the opportunity to preach to women. I hope that is happening soon next year. This was powerful. I, it's just like no comment. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. I you know, I know something. Uh, I used to say uh, I'm not an English person. You know, uh, I'm coming from a country where we speak French, and I tell myself that any language belongs to God. So we are going to try. Uh, my English is not going to be fluent. It's not going to be correct. But I'm sure that what God wants to tell me to tell to people is going to give me the word. So I hope you, you understand my English, even if it's not uh, uh, the perfect one, but I, I, I make myself uh, uh, the way people can understand. And I'm very happy uh, to, 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 to participate because I don't want to be uh, in the back because of the language. God will help me with that. Mm. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci d'être venu au moins à des camps of Oh. Yeah. Yes, Lena, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I've been listening to the wonderful uh, people in this uh, meeting, and I really agree. And it's very important that we really get uh, the inside to come forth, because it's, that is our uh, personality. It's uh, from the inside. Yeah, my natural language is not all, not English either, so it's not so very fast <laughs> speaking. But I have been reading a lot uh, last time about Esther, and it's very interesting. It's many things that I think is interesting to lift forth here, uh, because she, like uh, a lot of people, that they don't uh, show that they are Christians in in their workplace, but it's very important that we come forth and show who we are. And she was a hidden Hebrew. She didn't want to tell anybody about her um, belief. She had been raised by Mordecai. He was her stepfather. And of course, he teach her about God and the Hebrew ways to live. But we, both, we all know here that they didn't live that way. She lived a pagan way in that castle. But suddenly came a very, very difficult time for the people of God, and she had to step forth. So this was a, a true um, uh, what, uh, challenge for her because this was not what she had uh, thought that she should do. She was supposed to be just that beautiful queen for that king, and she had made a success, she won the competition, and she came into the king, he wanted her to be the queen. So, you know, she had the position, so why should she try to uh, 
lose it in that way because this was a temptation for her to uh, say no. But as Mordecai said to her, if you say no to this uh, 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 task that uh, you are going to have, you will die because all the Jews will get killed. So she had to choose the way and uh, she did. She chose really to, to do that. Uh, even if she felt that this was maybe her death. So sometimes when we are feeling bad inside, we still think that we, we need to do something for God. And I think when she fasted these three days together with the people and her, her friends around, they fasted three days without food and water. I think God, he came to her and gave this plan to really, really, uh, just a moment. <laughs> she was really trying to, to uh, um, find a way that God, I think God really tried to give her the solution. And she got the solution because she uh, was using her heart, her heart. She loved the people of God. She really did, even if she was in the in the pagan world, filled with a lot of bad things around her. She was chosen for a time like this, but the, the time was not good. It was a very, very bad time. So sometimes when we say uh, chosen for a time like this, we think it's positive, but it's the opposite. It's a very dark time when you need to step forth and take your Take a lead for God, as she did. This is not an easy way because it's a little bit to die yourself. So if you want to get that beautiful inside out, that you really want it to flow from your inside out, you need to do like Esther. You have to say yes to that, even if it's hard. And that is a type of, you can say, is how to be like Esther, how to make a success, to really make a success. It's not an easy way. It's to be pure in your heart, true to God. And you know, in the Bible, in, in uh, Matthew 5, 8, you can read, the pure of heart shall see God. And I think that she really cleansed her on the inside when she done that three days of fasting. Uh, she cleansed her inside. She purified herself on the inside. In the beginning, she had to purify herself a lot, uh, 12 months just to get in to the king and be chosen. But this time it was three days to purify her heart so it could get pure, you know, to get pure in your heart. Then you can hear what God say. You get in contact with God in a very special way so that you can get the answer in your time. And, you know, God never lose. Just as uh, Dr. Anik said, God never lose. He always win. When we are in contact with him, we are the victors. We, are victory. Um, we have quick victory in God when we are together with him. So we Esther knew she was chosen for a time like this. And the plan worked and the youth was saved from their first Holocaust. What's about you? How is it inside you? That's the question we have to tell ourselves. I can see you express a lot of beauty here, beautiful ladies here. But the real importance is to express who you really are. The truth is that Esther should not, she should have died together with the rest of the youth if she had said no. But she said yes to the task. We need to check ourselves, not just in the mirror outside. We also have to check the mirror inside ourselves. We are chosen for a time like this. And it's often that is we can feel the press. We can feel the, like you said, uh, enjoy. It's not always an joy to live. <laughs> but it, it's with God, we will get challenged to manage, to get through even hard things, as I've been widowed and I know how it is to, to have hard times, to feel that the, the life is ended, but there is always new season. 
just as the CD, I, I made a CD called uh, Livet Blomster Water is that life is all blooming again. It will yeah. bloom again. Whatever challenges you get through, he will be with you. Jesus is with you. This always time, this never time to give up. It's always time to give it up to God. Give yeah. your prayers up to God. Seek him honest. Clean your heart from all the negative thoughts, both about yourself and about others so that you can be clean, so you can think the right thoughts in the moment so that you can manage to have victory in your life. That's what I wanted to say, this little little um, words I wanted to say. Thank you so much, beautiful. I like when you said she fasted three days to purify her insight. And <clears throat> you mentioned the Bible says she prepared herself for 12 months, clean, cleaning the outside. But for God, she used only three. Three days was enough from the inside. And it's so beautiful to, to hear when you're speaking about all this, like yeah. to be ourself, even yeah. to, to be you know, not... Three, three is a holy, holy... Um, number. Uh, number. Yeah, so three is is a godly number. I think that yeah, Jesus died on the third day. He was victor, yeah. and yeah, yes. this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank and uh, this is the I think the fourth time you've been on my conference, maybe or the third time. Yes, it's the always time in English. <laughs> yeah, in English <laughs> this first time, but other time in Norwegian, and you still be yeah. coming because. I believe you have so much to give to women, uh, both in Sweden and all over the world. Thank you so much, dear sister, for sharing. And I enjoy visiting you last time I came to Sweden. It was wonderful to be with you. I'm going also to put your, your, the new CD when I will edit. So I'm going to share the picture of it while you are talking. Uh, for I have people some to... English songs also, but you can find me also on Spotify, so it's easy, Lena Jonsson. Exactly. You can see my name there. I will share that. I have some English Thank songs you. that can be very encouraging for some. Yes. Exactly. Thank you so much. We are going to listen to Venke, as we say. Hi, Venke. Hello, hello. Yes, it's... Very interesting to sit here and listening to. And especially when I was listening to Annick, that was just wow. That was just to listening by myself in Norwegian in a lot of years. So that was just wow. <laughs> because inside us, inside ourselves, we have so much beauty, but we are we were, we we are been telling like Annick was telling us. I have been telling it in the Norwegian. Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't use that clothes. Don't use makeup. Don't use the glory. Nothing. Cut your hair. I get so much since 1988 and many years. And then the Lord was using me in meeting from meeting to meeting. And then one day, my first husband was telling me, when you are coming to the meeting, you have to close your mouth. You can't speak. If you get something, you have to come home and ask me. Okay. But when I'm sitting in the meeting and the Lord is telling me something from the Bible or something else he wants to get out to the people, when I'm coming home to you and tell it to you, will you stand up on the meeting next day and tell it, no, no, no. Then you have to shut up and let me speak. So that's the first time I was speaking against my first husband and taking the authority the Lord had given me. Because he had the Lord had teaching me from 1988 through many years. And then I, I think this was in 
2011, 12, he was speaking like that to me. When I just take, get the world back to him, because then I was begin to understand what the Lord really have given to me. Because I have, since I was a little girl, always listening to the people around me, my parents, my brothers, and the uh, school class, you are nothing. You can't nothing. You have to do, but you can. You have to work, but you can. But then the Lord was teaching me through this year. Also, through my Bible, he was teaching me. So then, when I begin to understand, the Lord have chosen, he have picking these people who are looking on their self. I am nothing. Because the Lord wants to show the people who want to be big. I can use what is nothing. When the Lord was making the people, he using the dust of the earth to make the people. And when we are leaving this earth, we are going back to dust. Our body is going to, to be a dust, but our soul is going to heaven. And there is a man, he don't live anymore. He was telling here in Norway that the Christian, you can only have it inside yourself. You have to show Jesus on your face. Not only inside, but take Jesus outside and put it on your face. So there was a woman in 2013. She was asking me on a meeting. After the meeting was finished, we were sitting with a cup of coffee and something to eat. And then she was asking me, how can you then get, be shining like a glory with all the bad things you have been through in your life? How that's easy. I don't have Jesus only in my head. I have taken Jesus also into my heart. And when I have Jesus in my heart, I can be shining just like Jesus. And when we are thinking also when a man and a woman is going to the church to the priest for be marriage, what are the women doing? They're dressing in the white dress. Some of them have the crown on their head. The woman is being beautiful for this day. Why shouldn't this woman also have this beauty, not only inside, but also in or outside the rest of her life? Not only one day, but the rest of your life. Exactly. <laughs> yes. The woman is so beauty and there is so much power in the woman. The man could be so jealous on us, all of the women. Because the woman is doing so many things. But the man have been reading some verses in the Bible and taking it out from the Bible and using it like this finger. Don't do, don't do. You have to do everything I'm telling you. You can't take any decisions by yourself. Only listen to me. But that's not the Lord, what the Lord was telling us in the Bible. The Lord is telling us in the Bible, he is using the woman. Who was the first one who was came to the grave when Jesus was arised? A woman. He had been using the woman. In so many times in the Bible, if you're beginning to look for the woman in the Bible, then we can see the Lord is using the woman more than he has been using the man. So when I am been looking back for the what he have been here in Norway, 
-hmm. that men have been using the Bible on the wrong side just to take the woman down to the dirt, to, into the dirt. And I know when I'm coming to to Stor Stua, the Lord have telling me what dress I have to use when I have <laughs> to tell something. And I was telling my husband now, someday at that, I feeling so beauty. The Lord has showing me something I didn't know I have. When I was a kid, I want to take my life twice time, two times. When I was 10 years and also when I was 12, but the Lord was speaking to me. You can't do it because there are some people who need you. Amen. So when I also was getting this dress at my home and I take it on me, it was just, wow. Now I am just like what the Lord wants me to be. <laughs> he he showed me you're not a nothing. And the woman is not a nothing. The mm. woman is everything in the Lord. We are everything because the Lord has given us the same power he was using to take Jesus up from the death. That power have the Lord given to every one of us women who want to be his bride and his going out teaching the world I have been telling that Jesus didn't tell me to sit inside mm -hmm. in the Bible he said go out so I don't want to be sitting inside no so sometimes when I'm going out even if it's the winter I have been going in the dresses like it's summer and people are looking after me she must be crazy it's not summer, it's winter, it's snow, it's cold. But I can be going just like it's the summer. Mm. So that's the way to show the people how beautiful we are in Christ. When we know what we have inside, let it come on your outside also. Not Amen. hide it. We can't be hiding it. No. I usually said Jesus did everything in the public. Yes. He preached in the public. His ministry was in the public. No, when we mean public, he wasn't in a church. He was outside. Every morning he wake up, he go out, goes out. And he died in the public. He resurrected in the public. He went back to heaven in the public. He even was born in the in a place outside, not even in a hotel or in a hospital. So he's for the world, the king of the world. And it's this one we said is powerful. And the resurrection power cannot be buried again. We have been ignited where, and we have died with Jesus. We have been resurrected with him. It's to shine. There's no way they can put us back there. We have already resurrected with him. We can't exactly. take him back on the grave. So no matter how we try, no matter what the enemy or whatever the enemy use, when we know who we are in Christ and we know what he did on the cross and where he's sitting now, because he's not on the cross again. He's not in the grave again. He's shining in his glory and we have to reflect him. There are people, when I was a Christian, I used to say, what, what, which Jesus are you serving? The one in the cross, the one in the grave, my only sin in the heaven. And his splendor and his goal everywhere. And he wants me to shine. For instance, if the daughter of his president is visiting the, this Norway, we expect the daughter of the president to come beautiful, smelling good, having car, in a beautiful car with bodyguard, isn't it? And... Imagine that the, the daughter of a president comes like someone who is, uh, we will doubt if she's really the daughter of the president. So we should reflect our heavenly father, as Yannick was saying, and as Dr. Caroline was saying, we should, it's a calling. He created us as women. He chose, this is, you'll be a woman, you'll be a man. 
is to glorify him. He wants every day to see that we should reflect him. It's not about outer beauty, but from inside out. This is powerful. Exactly. Yes, I just wanted to hear about what you said. Thank you, dear sister. And I'm looking forward to see you <laughs> in the <laughs> conference <laughs> and the beautiful yes. dress you are saying. <laughs> and to hear what you want to share with us during the conference. It's going to be yeah. exciting. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, now we're going to listen to Claudia. Yeah. Hello, Claudia. I know you are very tired. You've traveled the whole day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, it, it has been very interesting to, to listen to, to all the women. Oh, it's so uh, wonderful. It's a, it's a reflection of uh, God's glory, I think. <laughs> that he is so precious in everyone. Uh, I think uh, that I uh, got a message. Um, yeah, I will read it. Come before me. You are called in this time. Be courage. Do not be afraid. I will guide you. Uh, I have called someone in high positions in politics. Do not be afraid. I will lay my words in your mouth. The land is open for you. You are precious. I have given you my glory. Uh, live and shine. This is your day. I will... Uh, I will guide you. I love you, my child. Go and give what I have given you. You are blessed and I prosper you in the name amen. of Jesus. Amen. 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 That was a powerful prophecy. And uh, Claudia, she's studying, she's taking, a, it's the second year of your writing a master in diaconi yes that's yeah. Yeah. yeah and she writes po poem and prophecy um i'm looking forward to read your book your first book very soon i will keep on encouraging you thank, thank you for the prophecy you gave um please if you can uh, send us the prophecy so i will send to the women after because mm. i believe that uh, this will be encouraging for many we should shine and go out with what he gave us. Amen. Amen. So I would like to pray um, to conclude. I thank you all of you, my big sisters and friends and lovely little sisters. We have other women who could not come. Sarah Grace was sick. She's a television host producer and pastor living in USA. And uh, Nikki is a psychologist. She's also a theologian living in Canada. Sometimes the time differences could be the challenge. And we have um, Anna Linda, and um, she was having a concert tonight. She's a music teacher and worship leader. She plays all around the world and she, she's coming to my conference. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thank you so much for you guys who have been here. The message, we are reading the comment and I'm going to be praying and please pray for us. We are experiencing a lot of challenges when it comes to the conference, uh, but we won't give up now. It's in one month's time. We need prayer for protection, provision, and everything. Thank you for praying. Now I'm just going to thank God for this time. Father, we just give you praise and adoration, and thank you for what you've put in every one of us. We give you praise, and we commit this word to you and the video. I pray that everyone who is going to watch this, that they will be encouraged, and then they will be lifted in their faith or any situation they may find themselves in. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to tell you, you who is watching now, if you are going through depression or anxiety or maybe you have a story to share, uh, please take contact with us. We have a lot of women who are working in the field of um, of uh, encouraging and coaching and entrepreneur and pastors take contact with us we are going to help you and even if you have prayer topics sent 
awesome message. I'm going to say, share the link where you can get in touch with us. And uh, hopefully uh, we will see next time. Thank you to all of these wonderful women of God. Thank you. Thank you for being here. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.